All right, everyone. So welcome back to my three-part talk about meditation and personal change. And this second talk is about letting go of knowing that something needs to change. Um, before I get into the talk, again, want to thank all of my patrons on Patreon and everyone who has contributed financially to make um, these online teachings possible. <clears throat> okay, so as I talked about in the other talk, uh, meditation when done properly is very humbling and we often start to see problems with ourselves, things that we want to change personally. And these changes tend to happen in four categories in my experience. Some things change very quickly. Some things change more gradually or slowly. Some things change by the grace of God through surrender and faith. And then I found some things don't change at all. Now, it's nothing is forever, right? So could change tomorrow. Something I'm talking about right now that didn't change for me could change tomorrow, right? So this is a, you know, a provisional teaching, if you will. It's not about absolute truth, but this is to help someone who's on the path and maybe they will recognize certain features uh, that they on their path that this will help guide them, okay? So I covered the first three in my last talk, so you can go back and check that out. Um, today I wanted to talk a little bit about the things that don't change at all. So this can be extremely frustrating. Um, we learn meditation, we learn spirituality, things start changing, we start becoming better people. Other people even might recognize this, right? Our children or our loved ones. Uh, they may actually encourage us to meditate or do yoga because they can see the changes. We can feel the changes. It feels like we're on our way to becoming perfect, right? <laughs> we're, uh, a lot of times this is how it can feel. If we get on a real spiritual path, we might be feeling like, my God, I'm going to be just the most perfect person soon. I'm going to say the right thing and do the right thing, and I'm just going to be loving in all circumstances. And... Maybe that happens to some people, but I think for the vast majority of people, um, there is an experience at the beginning that we might feel this way. And then later on, it might actually feel like we're going backwards again as we begin to notice all these things about ourselves. We might start to feel like, gosh, I'm really not very spiritual at all. I'm not really um, as kind or as nice or as generous as I wish I was or as I thought I was, right? So that can be really frustrating, disheartening. What I'd like to make clear is it really is only our ego that gets frustrated by this. And this is important to understand. So we are trying to attune ourselves to spirit and spirit is always at peace with what is. Even our own personal shortcomings. So I've heard students before talk about, you know, things like, oh, my spirit needs to do this or that, or, well, that's not really the spirit that I'm talking about when I talk about spirit with a capital S. Maybe you could say soul. I don't know. There, you can think of maybe this entity. Some people like to think of past lives and things like that. So Maybe there is this entity that is, you know, moving from one body to another, but that's not even really what I'm talking about when I talk about spirit. So spirit is our true nature. It's that which transcends any sense of separation. And spirit is all loving. Spirit is love. God is love. Spirit is God. Um, and so spirit is our true nature the grand of our being and it's in love with all of creation it isn't in judgment of you or your personal shortcomings and as much as as we begin to become more clear and fully embodied spirit if we're not careful you might say what we begin to see the clarity we with which we see ourselves can actually lead the ego to come in and then start 
judging us and we want to be careful about this okay uh, we really don't know what aspects of ourselves are ultimately good or bad um, the ego is the one that would presume to know good from bad um, or to know what the greater good is right only in reality an all-knowing being can truly know this and that's not you right last time you checked you're not God you don't know everything um, this is very important for spirituality if you are someone who thinks that you do know everything or you're usually right or um, you know if you think that you are all-knowing then you're really under a big ego delusion so um, this teaching probably isn't even for you <laughs> if that's the case so we need to stay humble and again meditation is tends to be when it's practiced properly very humbling and things that we may have been told were flaws of ours they may actually be an asset and I like to give the example of imagine a strong-willed woman um, who lives in a society or is born into a society where woman, women are valued for being meek okay, and being submissive. So we modern people look at our movies, look at our culture. We really prize and encourage women to be strong. And so women in our culture don't tend to have a problem exhibiting strength, many women. Um, we even think it's like sexy, right? Um, but the reality is some women are strong-willed by nature and others aren't. It doesn't matter that we try and culture or we value that. Maybe some women who are kind of borderline, maybe some of them are not afraid to let that out more. Um, and maybe we can cultivate that to a degree, but the fact of the matter is some people are just more strong-willed and other people aren't. It doesn't really matter what our society values. Same for men, right? Just some men are going to be leaders or strong-willed and other men aren't. And there's nothing wrong or bad with that, even though the society might hold one up as the ideal, okay? So imagine a modern day strong-willed woman being born into a culture where women are supposed to be meek, where it, that's what's valued. Um, is there anything really wrong with this woman just because she's born into a culture that doesn't value her qualities? Does that really make her bad or make her wrong? Um, or could we say that the culture is actually wrong? or bad, right? Um, that's not really true either, so I don't want you to go there um, because every culture has certain things that it values and certain things that it doesn't. And again, like right now, we might be trying to hold up this example of a strong woman and then we're actually not valuing women who don't exhibit that. Okay, it, why is it bad for a woman to be meek or even a man to be meek? Okay, to be submissive. We can't all be strong leaders, right? It's just not possible. And in America, I think we try as much as we can to create that, this sort of rugged individualist, this idea that everyone can walk around being a leader, but it, it's just not possible, right? So there's, there's nothing wrong with um, being strong, but there's also nothing wrong with being weak in a sense or not being strong, okay? I hope that that makes some sense. So the culture has certain qualities. Are they good or bad? We have certain qualities. Are they good or bad? Who really knows? And so maybe our flaws, what we see as flaws, the things we'd like to change, maybe they actually serve a greater good that we can't see. Again, that we would have to be divine. We would literally have to see all time, all space, all interactions to 
really be able to judge. And from everything I've experienced and everything I've heard and everything I've seen, when we really share God's perspective, what did God say about his creation in the Bible anyway? It's good. And from everything, again, that I've experienced and read and seen in deep spirituality, that is really the perspective of the divine. It's all good. Now, does this mean that we don't have any problems? We don't need to change? <laughs> there isn't progress? Absolutely not. Okay? So, again, in the type of spirituality that I teach, we have to hold both the absolute divine perspective, but also a human um, limited perspective. We have to hold both of these together. We can't get too far off on one side or else it's like we're walking on one leg or we're seeing with one eye or one ear. We're not really balanced and we're not seeing the full picture. Okay? So, there was a renowned 7th century Zen master named Seng Tsang, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And he said, true freedom is being without anxiety about imperfection. And this is what I'd like to talk about in the next talk. So I hope you'll join me for that. Until next time, namaste and have a good day.